when you touch the leaves of a touch me not plant you would have observed them curling up or folding inwards and then opening again after a while leaves are such fascinating structures aren't they if you observe different plants you'll see many different types of leaves in different shapes and sizes but internally the structure of leaves is quite simple before we put a leaf under a microscope let's refresh some basics about the morphology or the parts of a leaf this is how a typical leaf looks like the main green part of the leaf is called the lamina or the leaf blade this is green in color and is the site of photosynthesis the lamina is held up by the petiole and the lamina has several lines running through it the main big line is called the vein and the smaller lines that emerge from the vein are called veinlets veins and veinlets provide support to the leaf so how do we see a leaf under a microscope one way is to cut it horizontally to get its transverse section let's take a look at the transverse cross sections of dicot and monocot leaves and we'll begin with the anatomy of a dicot leaf so dicot leaves are called dorsiventral leaves and now dorsiventral means they have distinct upper and lower surfaces dorsal means lower and ventral means upper so these leaves have distinct upper and lower surfaces i'll explain in just a while why dicot leaves are called dorsiventral leaves and the transverse section of a dicot leaves looks something like this under a microscope and these are the different parts of a dicot leaf let's begin with the top surface of the dicot leaf which is called the adaxial surface the epidermis which we know is the outermost layer that is found on the top surface of the dicot leaf is called the adaxial epidermis or the upper epidermis above the adaxial epidermis is a layer of waxy cuticle now cuticle as we know is a layer that prevents excess water loss through transpiration from leaves in leaves the parenchymatous cells that have chloroplasts are called mesophyll cells and in dicots the mesophyll cells are differentiated into two types palisade mesophyll and spongy mesophyll so the mesophyll cells that are close to the adaxial surface are called palisade mesophyll cells and these cells are elongated and are arranged close to each other with very little intercellular space the chloroplasts are found at the top surface of the mesophyll cells the palisade mesophyll cells close to the adaxial epidermis which allows for optimal sunlight absorption now below the palisade mesophyll cells are the spongy mesophyll cells and these spongy mesophyll cells are located close to the lower epidermis which is called the abaxial epidermis so the adaxial epidermis is the upper surface and the abaxial epidermis is the lower surface so the mesophyll cells that are located close to the abaxial surface are called spongy mesophyll cells and these cells have a lot of intercellular space or air cavity in between them they are not as closely packed as the palisade mesophyll cells this air cavity helps in the diffusion of gases in and out of the leaves the stoma as we know is the stomatal opening through which gas exchange takes place now in dicots the stoma are found mainly on the abaxial surface or the lower surface of the leaves and not on the adaxial or the upper surface of the leaves in fact some leaves some dicot leaves might not have stomata on their upper surface at all whatever stomata they have they will have it on the lower surface only now why do you think this is so we know that apart from gas exchange stomata is also the site where water loss through transpiration occurs and the upper surface of the leaf is exposed more to sunlight and to the environment compared to the lower surface of the leaf so to prevent water loss through transpiration stomata are found only on the lower surface more stomata are found only on the lower surface of the leaf and the adaxial epidermis adaxial surface lacks stomata or has only few stomata the veins that we talked about they exist in the form of reticulate venation in dicot leaves veins in the reticulate venation are made up of the vascular tissues the phloem and xylem the vascular tissues are surrounded by a layer called bundle sheath cells 
Bundle sheath cells are modified parenchymatous cells that protect the vascular bundles and also aid in the movement of water and nutrients. So, now do you understand why dicot leaves are called dorsiventral leaves? They have a distinct ventral surface or the upper surface that is made up of palisade mesophyll and a distinct lower or the dorsal surface made up of spongy mesophyll. With that, let's move on to the anatomy of monocot leaves. Monocot leaves are called isobilateral leaves. This means their upper and lower surfaces are identical. Bilateral means two sides, upper and lower surfaces. Isobilateral means similar upper and lower surfaces. Now, what does that mean? To understand that, let's take a look at how the transverse section of a monocot leaf looks like under the microscope. In terms of structures that make up a monocot leaf, they are quite similar to the dicot leaf. They also have the adaxial or the upper epidermis, abaxial or the lower epidermis, cuticle covering both epidermal layers, phloem, xylem and mesophyll cells. However, in monocot leaves, the mesophyll is not differentiated into palisade and spongy mesophyll. Instead, it's just closely packed mesophyll cells. So, they are not differentiated into a distinct upper and lower layer, upper and lower surface which means their upper and lower surfaces are the same. And that's why monocot leaves are called isobilateral leaves. There's one more major distinction between monocot and dicot leaves. In monocots, the stomata are present on both the adaxial and the abaxial surfaces. Now, this feels a little risky, right? The presence of stomata on the adaxial surface means there could be more water loss from the upper surface. To avoid this, some monocots have special cells called bulliform cells. Bulliform cells are modified epidermal cells located along the veins. And we know that the veins are made up of phloem and xylem, the vascular bundles. When the plant has enough water, the bulliform cells will swell up. And this causes the upper surface to be exposed to the environment. And even if transpiration occurs now, it's okay because the plant has enough water. When the plant doesn't have enough water, the bulliform cells will shrink and this will cause the leaves to curl up inwards and this will not expose this adaxial surface to the environment. This will sort of close it up. Only the abaxial surface might be exposed to the environment. And with the curling up or the closing of the adaxial surface, the loss of water will be avoided or can be reduced. But don't think that bulliform cells are why touch me knots curl up when we touch them. Touch me knots are dicots and they don't have bulliform cells. Then how do they curl up? To answer that question, think of what happens when you accidentally touch a hot surface or a flame from a candle. How does your body respond? How does your body react? Figure that out and you would have answered why touch me knots close up when you touch them. 